Hello, everyone. My name is Christian Centeno, and I'm a support engineer on the Azure Identity Team at Microsoft. Welcome back to the third and final part of our video series, where we are covering the MFA server migration to Azure AD MFA. In the previous videos, we have covered the MFA server migration overview, including the MFA server upgrade and the configuration of the MFA server migration utility. We also performed the migration of two users and confirmed the authentication methods synced on the Azure AD for those users. Now we would like to share with you the final steps you need to take to make sure everything is okay and complete the MFA server migration to Azure AD MFA. Come with me and let's do it. As you may recall, in the first video, we talked about another Azure AD group that needs to be created which is the one that we will configure on the stage rollout to inform to Azure AD that any MFA requests for the members of that group will be performed by Azure AD instead of the MFA server. With that said, let's now create our Azure AD group to be used on this stage rollout. From the Azure portal, go to Azure Active Directory, Groups, and then New Group. Name of the group. Then let's add our users, members of this group. And then create. Now that we have our Azure AD group created with our migrated users as members, let's enable and configure the stage rollout with that group. From the Azure portal, go to Azure Active Directory, Azure AD Connect, then Connect Sync, followed by Enable Stage Rollout for Managed User Signing. From this page, you will see the Stage Rollout features where you can enable or disable as needed. The one that we need to enable is Azure Multifactor Authentication. You will be prompted to enable it. Once enabled, click on Manage Groups. Then Add Groups. Select our group. And that's it. We have our group configured on this stage rollout feature. Before we test Azure MFA being performed by our test users, we need to confirm if MFA is not being required by an access control policy defined on the rely part trust used to federate your tenant on your ADFS server. Because it can force your users to perform MFA on your MFA server even with all the previous configurations and settings already performed. In order to check that, you can see from this column, if you have any access control policy that will require MFA, and you can also edit access control policies from here. As you can see, we, we have this setting to permit everyone no policy to require MFA. Instead, we can use CA policies to require MFA. As you can see here, we already have the, our two test users and the grant control on this CA policy is to require MFA. Now that we have the users and authentication methods migrated Stage rollout settings configured to route the MFA requests to Azure AD and a policy on Azure AD to require MFA. It's time to test and make sure that everything is working as expected. Let's now authenticate with the user one and see what happens.
instead of interacting with MFA on the ADFS page, as it is for users in an MFA server deployment, the MFA prompt shows a different experience. And we can see from the URL that this is coming from the Azure and not from our ADFS. Let's now complete the MFA prompt. We are authenticated with the user one. Now let's do the same with the user two. Basically, the same experience. The prompt is not coming from the ADFS page, and we can also confirm that this is coming from Azure instead of ADFS if we check where else. So let me now accept the push notification and complete the authentication. And we are in. After confirming that all your users were successfully migrated, completing the phase two and the all radius or LDAP dependencies with your MFA server were migrated, the next step will be updating the domain federation settings to inform Azure AD to not redirect any MFA requests to your on-premises MFA server. In order to do that, we need to have the Microsoft Graph PowerShell SDK installed and set the federated IDP MFA behavior property to reject MFA by federated IDP. So from the PowerShell, let's connect to Microsoft Graph using a global admin account. Now let's create the variable which contains the property that we want to use on the next PowerShell command. As you can see, here we have the property named as federated IDP MFA behavior and its value, reject MFA by federated IDP. Now that we have this variable created, we will now paste the next command. Here we, we have the command let update MEG domain federation configuration, the domain ID, the, the internal domain federation ID, and the body, body parameter pointing to our variable. Now let's confirm using the following command. Here we have the property and the value defined as we need. After completing this task, users will no longer be redirected to your on-premises federation server for MFA, regardless of their inclusion in the stage rollout feature. Please remember that updates to the domain federation setting can take up to 24 hours to take effect. Now that we have completed the migration and confirmed that users can authenticate using Azure MFA after updating the federation settings, we will need to instruct users to use the Azure AD Combined Registration Portal, aka .ms forward slash MFA setup, to manage their authentication methods rather than the user portal. Now we have two options. Redirect the user portal URL to aka .ms MFA setup page, or completely disable the user portal and inform users to go to aka.ms forward slash MFA setup. For this demo, we will simply disable the user portal from the MFA server user interface and test the access. Now, if we go to MFA server UI, then user portal, here, we will see the allow users to log in. We just need to deselect the, uh, this option. And if we go to 
user portal. And if we hit refresh, we'll be able to see this message with direct logins to user portal are disabled. So instead of user portal, let's sign in to the MFA setup page with one of our demo users. Now let's complete MFA. So this is the place that users will now manage their MFA settings after disabling the user portal on your MFA server. And now, as we went through all these steps to complete the MFA server migration to Azure AD, the MFA server is no longer needed. Simply follow your standard server deprecation procedures, but please note that this is optional and you don't need to take any special action in Azure AD to indicate that the MFA server is being retired. And that's it, folks. Hope you enjoyed our video series where we covered the MFA server migration to Azure AD MFA. Please consider migrating your MFA server to Azure AD as the deprecation was already announced and it provides you several benefits, including improved security, scalability, and ease of management. For more information on what we have covered today, please check our public documentation. Thanks for watching.